Well, good morning. It's great to be here and uh, to be in our second week of this series, He Restores My Soul, which we started last week. And I am just so enjoying and have enjoyed uh, kind of preparing for this series and all that God's been showing me. And just, I think it's going to do us good. I think it's going to be a turning point for us as a church, as, as individuals, just in our lives. And so um, I want to invite you to lean in today into this day where we, we're looking at Sabbath. So last week kind of set us up that God restores our souls. Um, and just looking over these coming weeks now on spiritual disciplines or practices or habits of how we enter into rest with Jesus, how we enter into his presence so that we can truly be restored. And so today is Sabbath, the first discipline, the first habit, the first practice. Um, and it was interesting when the beginning of the pandemic happened, I don't know if you can remember back that far, back in March 2020, doesn't it seem a while ago now, and yet at the same time feels like yesterday. But there was some teaching that came out by Dr. Henry Cloud and that we feasted on a little bit, but it was uh, talking about the psychology of crisis. And one of the major losses we had during the pandemic was a loss of structure. And Dr. Henry Cloud was saying that a loss of structure is really bad for us because we were, we were made and designed to live within structure and boundaries and rhythms. And so when we lost that, it kind of took away one of our very foundations and, and probably why so many of us have felt the, the toll of this past year or so. And we felt so drained and exhausted because one of the very things we were designed for, structure, was taken away as well as connection and lots of other things. And I think a lot of us coming into the summer are just pretty exhausted. And we know we can't just keep going. We know we haven't got the emotional reserves, the grit to you know, pull up our bootstraps and grin and bear it and keep going. And so something's got to shift, something's got to change. And I think this series and this teaching and what God is inviting us into is the shift and the change. Um, it says, that I've heard that millennials are the burnout generation. Woohoo! Um, so I just make it, by the way, if you were questioning my millennial status, I just, I'm on the cusp. Um, but we are the burnout generation. I've said we, I've owned it now. Um, but because we just keep going just because of the, the, the generation we live in. But we know that that isn't how life should be. Deep down, there's a kind of discontent there. And it says in scripture, in Hebrews 4, verses 9 to 10, it says, and yet there remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his and so we're invited into this Sabbath rest, a, a day. Um, for those of you who've never heard the word Sabbath before, it's a day, it's a time, 24 hour period. So it's also a spirit of Sabbath, but we're not gonna get into that today. But it's a day set aside, a holy day. You know, we, a holy day, we, that's where we get our word holidays from. A holy day. So rather than just having kind of working, working, working till you get a holiday or waiting for Christmas, which is loads of fun, we get 52 holy days a year if we choose to. 52 holidays a year a Sabbath rest, a Sabbath day, a holy day. And it's like Christmas, but without the stress and without the weird relatives, it's a win. Um, so, so, sorry, family. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna stop, stop there. And I'm gonna turn to our conversation that Melissa and I had, uh, that we recorded. And um, for those of you who don't know Melissa, she's a really good friend of mine. I'd go as far to say uh, that she is family to me. And uh, we've journeyed together for well over a decade in the work of Beyond Ourselves. And Melissa and Dan uh, lead the team in the office over in Zambia. And so we have struggled and practiced and held each other accountable to this idea and this practice of Sabbath over uh, the decade. We've had some very busy seasons and some very stressful seasons. And so we've kind of chewed on this for a while. So I thought she'd be a great person to have a conversation with. Um, she has a full life uh, leading the team out there with her husband, uh, leading the work out there. She has three boys who she homeschools at home on her own. Um, Dan does the maths, I think, but that's about it. But, <laughs> no, Dan, I know you do more than that. But homeschooling boys, just open house, hospitality, people coming in. And so we're going to look at this, this word Sabbath and this practice of Sabbath in our busy lives. And so my first question to Melissa was, was Sabbath a part of your upbringing? Was it something, uh, a rhythm that you were used to as a child? And kind of what did that look like? 
Yeah, so it very much was part of the rhythm of our lives growing up. I grew up in quite a small town and there was a lot of um, many churches and a lot of Christians that lived there. So, And I come from an extended family where most people go to church and would consider themselves Christian. So Sabbath was very much part of our lives and um, my friends' families' lives and extended family as well. And so that was... That was great because it was it was just what we did, and so we would go to church on a Sunday morning, and um, in and then after church we would go out for lunch, and I think that that kind of um, gave my mum a break from from um, from cooking, and we weren't ones to eat out a lot, but that was the one time where we would we would go out, and we were allowed fizzy drinks, which was very exciting because <laughs> we didn't have those otherwise, um, and then we would go home and we would have a nap, and that was just what we all did. And if you didn't nap, then you would read in your room and it was just a real quiet time. And then um, I grew up with a lot of extended family nearby. And so then kind of late in the afternoon, it was always going to go visit extended family grandparents or aunts and uncles. And that was just really fantastic um, family time. And and then we would have a really simple meal. Um, I come from a German heritage. And so we would have this simple meal called Faspa for supper. And that really was rolls and cheese and some like sandwich meat, jam, homemade jam that was so yummy and um, pickles. And that was really it. And so it was just, again, it was like going easy. It was a really simple, simple day, but just a day to rest, a day to enjoy God and a day to enjoy family. And so um, I grew up with that very much part of our rhythm. Also in the town where I grew up in, there was no uh, shopping on Sunday. So there and really no sport even actually. And so it really was that there was an opportunity to do a, a whole lot more as well, which, which I think was actually great because it, it kept us in a really good rhythm. How about for you, Jody? I know that our, our growing up was, was very different, very different yeah. situations. Uh, what did it look like for you? Yeah. So, um, I don't think we ever named it as Sabbath. Uh, I don't remember kind of the conversation around this is kind of our Sabbath day, but Sunday was definitely different uh, from the rest of the week. So uh, a couple of things. Um, so we, my dad uh, worked all week, um, but Sunday was his day off and he, um, he ran the business, he owned the business and he, makes it, he, he made sure it was shut on a Sunday. And even when Sunday trading laws changed um, in my childhood teens, I can't remember quite when that was, but he kept uh, keeping clothes on a Sunday. And um, and I remember he had to have a conversation with kind of the, the powers that be, you know, the people who work in the, the wider company and saying, you know, I'm a Christian and I, I won't work on a Sunday. So he, he definitely set it aside as a, as a holy day and as a yeah. day where he wasn't going to work. So that I remember dad being around on a Sunday, which was always nice. And we'd go to church. So we'd worship uh, in the morning. There's a family service. And then as I got older, we'd go twice to the evening service as well. Um, yeah, and, and family meals. And sometimes my brother would play sport. As he got older, he was in a lot of sports teams. And we would kind of watch cricket matches or whatever on a Sunday. But it was very much a chilled day and a relaxed day and a family day and a day we went to church and, and worshipped. And yeah, like I said, don't think it was a Sabbath intentionally, um, but it certainly felt like one. Um, yeah. And yeah, my gran used to joke uh, that my mum was so organised, we had our Sunday roast on a Friday night. Um, <laughs> and I don't know if that was just because Saturday was quite busy with sport and seeing yeah. friends and then Sunday was set aside. I don't know. I'm, I mean, mum's probably on the chat this morning online, so she can let us know whether it was intentionally a Sabbath thing or just her pure organisation. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and we always had to do our homework um either on a Friday or Saturday it had to be done by we weren't to do homework on a Sunday um and again that could have just been an organizational thing that has <laughs> filtered down through the family but <laughs> I think as well it was a no work on a Sunday um yeah, yeah. kind of feeling which was really lovely actually and did yeah. give give the mind a rest um which yeah. was really nice um so yeah that was kind of growing up Sabbath and so for you now Melissa obviously life is very different from uh where you grew up and you've lived in Toronto in a big city you've lived in the UK and now you're in Zambia <clears throat> and like so what does Sabbath look like for you now in the busyness of life and with kids and work and 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 responsibilities yeah so our Sabbath is often uh, more on a Saturday 
we've been quite involved as church in different seasons of our lives. And so Saturdays, or sorry, Sundays, not always felt like a Sabbath because also uh, the culture here very much is that you you have church and then you have people over afterwards. And so then it becomes a, an afternoon of hosting, which is something that we love to do. We love to open up our home. Uh, however, that doesn't necessarily always lend itself to rest. And so mm-hmm. Saturdays is often our day where we go slow. And that's not to say that we don't have some jobs that we do along the way, but we do just try to start our day with pancakes <laughs> as as Jody's often experienced. Yeah. And then we do, we, we do just try to spend time with the kids. We try to be really intentional to play some games with them, play Lego, just be really present. And in the afternoon, almost invariably, there's a nap. We love <laughs> and and genuinely feel like we need it. Uh, by the end of the week, the weeks are full on. And so by the time it comes to Saturday afternoon, it's a movie for the kids and it's a nap <laughs> for all the adults. <laughs> and um, as Jody has often experienced, and yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's just something that we've put into the rhythm of our week. And it's something that like I said, we, we really feel like we need. And then after that, often Dan is playing football with the boys and I'm able to take more time to make a meal and make something that's hopefully yummy and, um, and not rush through the food preparation. I love cooking. So it's really a great time just to have uh, um, to have a few more moments to, to just go slow, either listen to music or listen to a podcast while I'm cooking and just, yeah, go a bit slow. So that's kind of one part, but I'd say that the mm. other part of Sabbath for me is I try to take an uh, an evening, sorry, a week where I spend time intentionally with God. And that's sort of very much a silence and solitude <laughs> um, time. I'm, I'm an introvert by nature. So I feel like I, I really need that time. Mm. And um, that's often where I, yeah, I'm intentionally connecting with God. And so that's, that's that time. And then I think the Saturday is very much sort of the rest and the the time with the delighting with my family and, and just being yeah. with them. Yeah. yeah. How about for you, Judy? What does, what does the average kind of Sabbath look like for you? Yeah. Well, you just touched on kind of some of the um, key stuff about Sabbath. You, I know um, we both read John Mark Comer and listened to mm-hmm. some of his stuff and uh, yeah. Bridgetown Church at, a big on um, Sabbath and and ways to connect and be with Jesus, and they 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 kind of describe Sabbath as stop, rest, delight, and worship. And you kind of just hit on all those those things. So they're the things I try and build in too, um, because of that. Piece. It's just a really helpful um, yeah. kind of touchstone to go. Oh, okay, am I stopping? So am I yeah. stopping from work? Am I stopping from worrying and worrying about work? Am I stopping, you know, from kind of wanting things? And you know, because downtime isn't me going online shopping that's not um (laughs) that's me time that's not Sabbath time um and yeah and kind of that that resting kind of resting our souls resting our minds and 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 that delighting in in God and celebrating what he's done and yeah yeah and then that worship time like you say just putting on some music or or praying and yeah just find trying to build those in um Mm -hmm. and it looks different different times and so I have tried to um like you Sunday is a is a fuller day for me and so that's and technically a work day and so I have put into my schedule the Sabbath from 5 p.m on a Friday night a Friday evening to Saturday 5 p.m so that yeah. I quite like to start with an evening I like to start yeah. with a meal and you know watching the sun go down and then you get a good sleep um mm-hmm. so that's that's good and then the Saturday and then that leaves me some time a Saturday evening if there's anything I need to prep uh, last yeah. minute for the Sunday morning just checking if the running orders check you know just bits and pieces for church and um, so that gives me some some flexibility but yeah I mean I I love Sabbaths at your house uh, I love <laughs> the pancakes and the naps and um, yeah but for me obviously a I'm an extrovert but b I live on my own and so mm-hmm. I try actually what brings me restoration and rest is being around my family and my nieces and nephews and yeah. so um, try and have sometimes a sleepover with the kids on a Friday night, invite a couple of them over. I don't have all of them. I'm not sure how <laughs> restful that would be, but just a couple of them. Uh, <laughs> on a, they're a bit on a rosy schedule, actually. Um, and then, and so that means I get a nice kind of evening with them watching a movie. Um, and then kind of we, we've taken on the Whitcomb pancake tradition. And so have you know, a nice breakfast on a Saturday morning. Um, yeah, and then so that's, that, and that just seems to, to feed my soul um quite a lot yeah. and yeah. yeah I think it's it's that and it's 
yeah it's just finding that time to to stop isn't it and it's not and getting the balance that it's not a day off it's yeah, different yeah. from a day off yeah um, I think that's spot on it's also just thinking about what are things that genuinely refuel me and mm. online shopping trolling through twitter I, I'm not sure that refuels many of us, you know, like, again, that might be a bit of me time, but does that refuel us, you know? Yeah, to me, it doesn't. definitely. Um, yeah, and, you're right. Yeah, and so it's like, what what genuinely are the things that that bring me life and, and kind of refuel me for the week ahead? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and it's, yeah, I mean, the the online stuff is, is definitely something that doesn't refresh me. Um, and and it is you know technology is great it's enabling us to have this conversation uh, mm-hmm. but they're you know it's it's clever it's designed to suck you in it's designed to yeah. to work, while away the hours and not replenish your soul and so yeah for me um putting my phone in the other room or sometimes even turning it off completely um is is something I do as well mm-hmm. um, and it's yeah because then the day so my I'm quite fortunate that my day off is Friday and so I get kind of a run into Sabbath. So I get to do all my errands, go to the gym, yeah. get any shopping I need and get all that done before five o'clock. And so that I don't need to do that. So I can switch off from that stuff um, because, yeah, it's, you know, Sabbath is it's rest, but it's rest with Jesus. Yeah. And I think that's the key, isn't it? That it's not just downtime. It's, it's where we find true rest um, with Jesus. And, you know, we see that through scripture, don't we? yeah and I think also a key part like you're saying is is the preparation of it right like that actually it it takes a little bit of um of prep time so that you can have those hours where you truly are off and so it does mean that you kind of need to shift things around sometimes or or get that to-do list you know try to finish as much as you are able to um ahead of time but then also it's just drawing a line and being like hey I'm done you know and and I think that's hard in this day and age where it always feels like there's something more that can be done. And that's something that I struggle with, even not even with like to do lists, but just looking around the house and seeing the mess and, you know, seeing <laughs> a few more dishes to do or there's another hungry child or, you know, those sorts of things. And it's some of those day to day responsibilities, I think, can be difficult. It's hard to find rest sometimes in the midst mm. of those doing as much as you can to prepare for that time of rest, I think doesn't make it a bit easier. And also letting it go, you know, sometimes the floor just will be covered with Lego and that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I read, um, or I heard someone, I think it was the the pastor from Reality Church in LA or somewhere, and he and his family have a Sabbath box. Mm. And so they, uh, what they do is they put the things in that box that they don't need for right. Sabbath. So it might, you know, it's their phone or their devices, um, yeah. But also, uh, they also write down um, the things, the worries they don't need to, or the yeah, things on the to-do list that they haven't got done, and they write it down, and then they just don't need to think about it. It's there; they can pick it up or not at the end of Sabbath. Um, yeah. But it's those things like this life. We've never finished our to-do list, and you and I love a to-do list. Uh, we love ticking off a to-do list. So to yeah. to not have something finished uh, before us Sabbath is is actually can yeah. be quite tense and stressful, and that's one of the obstacles for, for Sabbath for me. Yeah. is that I've just got so much to do and and so I'm having heard about this Sabbath I thought oh I might I might do that I might write down the things but mm-hmm. okay I didn't get that done and that's okay I'm going to put it aside for this 24 hours or however many hours I'm doing and I'll pick it up or not after yeah. um yeah. so yeah so you can you can ask me how that's going next week or two <laughs> <laughs> what what do you think so we've talked about planning and kind of prepping for it and the worries mm-hmm. that what kind of obstacles do you think um you've what obstacles have you experienced or do you think there are to either putting a sabbath in or keeping a sabbath going over a season yeah i think routine (laughs) i'm by nature a person of routine so when i feel like i'm in the routine of it it and the weeks go by and it's just something you know that that happens um or that we schedule in then it works well and then when when the routine, whether we have a team or we have visitors or we have um, just a really crazy week or whatever it may be, you know, that the routine gets sort of sidelined, then I feel like that's the thing that sets me off track. And it sometimes takes a few weeks to get back, back into it. So I feel like that's probably one big thing for me. And then the other thing I think is just um, 
sometimes not being intentional enough or disciplined, mm. whatever word you want to use, um, not having the motivation. And um, I think sometimes it's just hard to, when you see the to-do list, um, it's it's hard to prioritize rest. Mm. It, it genuinely doesn't always feel like the wise thing or the, I don't know, the thing to do, the thing, sometimes it's, you know, can even be a thing about, surely God will like it more if I work more, you know? And I mean, for both you and I, we, we work in ministry, you know, like we, we have these jobs where, it, where it can feel like, you know, you, surely it, it, it's the right thing to do just to keep going and keep going and keep going. Yeah. So um, that sense of, of taking time to rest can either feel selfish or something like that. So I think sometimes those mindsets around Sabbath um, are easily, can easily trip me up mm. at times. And I know that we've talked about that as well. Just the that that need within us to to just keep going, and mm-hmm. and that's really hard to break. I think sometimes, and to really get within ourselves the value of rest, and yeah. actually to do that enables us to keep going. It sustains us, and and that's I, there's been seasons where I've done that terribly, and then and then you f- I feel that massively. Yeah. Um, after a few weeks or a few months of, of not being intentional about rest, it's like, that's when you start to really feel burnout. And I know we've both experienced that. That's, and in some ways we set ourselves up for that sadly, you know, because we yeah. are not intentional about, about the rest. Yeah. yeah. There's so much in there that I want to <laughs> jump on, but I think, yeah, there's the, the kind of the not doing anything. So I get attacked by the, you're being lazy kind of mm. voice in my head and um, we work you know we we live in a culture that for some reason kind of resting um is seen as lazy and if you're not you know so many people know how are you doing oh, I'm busy and it's become like this badge of honor or a sign of success and and so to be counter-cultural to go walk in the opposite yep. spirit and say I'm going to stop and I'm doing nothing um yep. and I'm doing nothing with Jesus and it's great I'm going to have a nap I'm going to spend some yep. time in worship I'm going to spend time with my family and um, I'm going to look back over the six days that have gone past and celebrate all God's done. Yeah. And yeah. And yeah. And so that we, that we work from rest yeah. and don't work for rest. So, yeah. you know, it, there's a other culture that they work, 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 work. And then, Oh, sorry, I'll get a holiday. And that's yeah. just not the same. And I know we've done that and it's okay to, I think for some seasons, um, you know, like you say, sometimes there's just demands that means the Sabbath goes out the window for that week or two. And and it's okay to be exception, you know, to have exceptions because yeah. we're not legalistic and it's not a it's it's not a, a look, you know, it's not a legalistic thing. It's not like you must, you know. But there's there's something about not letting that become the new normal and missing it so that we get so exhausted. And yeah. um, yeah. and having yeah. said it's not a law, it's not legalistic, it is in the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and which is always kind of we gloss over that but right there you know near do not murder it says remember the sabbath yeah, and, yeah. and that's what i love that he, yeah <laughs> I, exactly i love that he didn't say do the sabbath he says remember it because he knows we're god knows what we're like and yeah. that we're likely to forget and and he's he's kind of invited us into this rest yeah, yeah. and built it into the very fabric of creation you go right back to the beginning to genesis yeah on the seventh day he rested yeah. and you know adam and eve's first day was that day and yeah, yeah. yeah and that's the working from rest isn't it but yes we're called to work but we're called to work from rest when god sp- first spoke about um the sabbath was when the israelites had just come out of egypt and i just i just think it's the kindness of god to invite us mm. into that you know here's the israelites they've come out of um out of slavery and all they've known known is toil and hard work and that the heavy hand of the oppressor you know over them yeah. and then god leads them out and then he says and i want a new rhythm for you and i mm. want to invite you to this new rhythm where it's like yes work 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 but then rest and and i just think it's so kind of god to not be that taskmaster and to invite us into this day of rest and and at the same time it's like we so often are like, nope, but I'm just going to keep on working, <laughs> you know? And, yeah. and we, we, um, I don't think we sometimes recognize the kindness of God, but also just 
that he has set this into creation. He set this in to our lives. And, um, and sometimes we, we honestly just don't honor it. We don't honor mm. that invitation to, to rest. And, um, and then later we pay the price for it. And, and it's just his kindness that keeps drawing us back, you know, to be like, yeah. come, and rest with me. come and spend time with me, come and refuel yourself and do things yeah. that you uh, delight in and refuel you. And it's just so kind that our maker would invite us into that. I love that. I genuinely yeah. I'm so moved by, by the kindness of the father to do that for us. Yeah. It's incredible, isn't it? To I mean he, he literally said to them, you know, my presence will go with you and yeah. I will give you rest. Yeah, yeah, it's an exodus. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And yeah. you know, there's so much out there on how to, you know, um get me time and to uh, you know, have downtime and it looks like this and it looks like that. And yeah, it might look like a bath, it might look like a nap, it might look like a good meal, it might look like, you know, a walk through the forest. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. it might look like all of those things, but it's only his presence mm-hmm. that brings us true rest. Yeah. You know, and, and it's all the way through through scripture. Yeah, you know, Jesus, we've looked at this verse many times that come to me, all all you who are weary and burdened, I will give you rest. You know, Jesus picks it up and that actually our, our true rest is is in Jesus, it's in him. And we can nap all we like, you know, we can, you know, we can, um, you know, walk all we like, but unless we're doing it with Jesus and, yeah. and just that intentionality to stop, to cease, that's what Shabbat, which is the yeah. Hebrew word for Sabbath, that's what it means to stop, yeah. to cease yeah. and, and to kind of lay that stuff down. And unless we rest our, our, our souls and our, our bodies, unless we, you know, delight in all that he's done um, and delight in the goodness of God and, and worship him, Unless we do that as part of that time, mm. it's not true rest. You know, the, the true rest in, in Hebrews says there remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. Mm. And it's still there for us. And I, I, I'm i guilty of of not um, remembering it. And, you know, again, that commandment, remember the Sabbath. And, you know, I know last year we did the Jesus Way series and I actually mentioned that I'd put Sabbath into um my calendar I'd intent that intentionality that you talked about uh, that kind of putting it into my calendar at 5 p.m to Friday till 5 p.m Saturday it was blocked out Sabbath it said Sabbath and then in brackets it said stop rest delight worship just so I remembered yeah. and um and that was great and I you know and it meant that that you know that winter season which was tough um this whole year's been tough but you know it was tough and but having that Sabbath in place sustained me and but you know what I didn't I only put it to the end of the year in the calendar um I didn't just put a no end date and so this year has been really haphazard and I'll be really honest I haven't haven't had a regular Sabbath and I'm I'm feeling that and I'm so enjoying kind of um this series and kind of researching and prepping and spending time with Jesus about it because it's reminded me really kindly of that invitation to rest and yeah. But actually, we need to take it seriously. Um, and it's not easy. It's not easy to to build it into the calendar because it feels so alien. It feels so countercultural. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it's the kingdom of rest, the kingdom of restfulness in, in a world of restlessness. And and so it's, yeah, that it's that invitation. I, lo- I just really like your phrasing. It's that kindness of God and his invitation for rest. Um, and it's not a heavy hand. Yeah. It's yeah. not. It's to remember, you know, when he was talking to his, the the Israelites that's remembering you know you're no longer slaves and you know you and I we're no longer slaves and you know to remember our identity in that point and to cut to be working and living out of that that's just so good so mm. good um how do you feel yeah. like you connect with God like during your the Sabbath I mean you talked a little bit about how you um like delight in your nieces and nephews and that sort of thing but kind of the the part where you really feel like you connect with God what does that look like for you I love sitting outside and I love sitting mm. on a step. Um, I sit in I your house. I um, find myself sat on the front doorstep and just looking out with a cup of tea. And so that in, in silence um, and just, yeah, so I've got uh, decking out the back and I, I take my morning cup of tea and yeah. all, the dogs, all the dogs wandering around the garden first thing in the morning. <laughs> and I sit and I have time just to sit and um, just be with Jesus. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of a, the, the morning the morning part of it and then uh, worshiping mm-hmm. having worship music on and um, spending time 
looking, reading my Bible and not huge passages, just maybe um, a verse or two and just seeing what God says out of it. Often a psalm um, because that means I do my gratitude and thankfulness. Um, yeah. But yeah, often it, for me, it, it's just that stillness. Um, life's so busy and um, it's just that moment of stillness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. quite often. Um, yeah. yeah. But, and and I know for you, you said the kind of the Wednesday evening is your mm. your time with with Jesus and yeah. a more kind of silence and solitude as well. Yeah, um, yeah. I find it really um, helpful for myself. I I enjoy writing quite a lot, and so mm. I I journal loads, <laughs> and I just find that it's a really helpful way for me to process the week gone by and and to invite God into all that's going on. And I try to kind of get it all out and and then just really take time to allow God to speak into those things and um, I write those things down and and that it almost like kind of helps me kind of let go of the the week that's been and and get ready for the week that's ahead and it's like with a fresh word from God in that space Mm -hmm. and um yeah and and when I say a fresh word from God I mean it it's not like writing on the wall and audible it, it's a stillness and a calm normally and it's just the encouragement you know I'm I'm his girl I'm his daughter he loves mm. me he's with me there's some hard things maybe but he's there and and that's yeah. a lot of what it is and for some reason I need to hear that every week <laughs> and um and perhaps we all do but it's it's often very simple but it it's just that way for me of inviting God into all that's going on and then and hearing him taking that time to really yeah. hear him. yeah and yeah and we're really fortunate we live um we have a beautiful veranda and we have a, a stream that kind of goes up the back of our uh property where we live and and I also just try to take time on that evening to to just be still and and just listen to that river and remind myself of of um the waters of the Holy Spirit and just kind of the, and God's love for me and, and something about the sound of that water I just found is really refreshing and, and is a beautiful imagery of the, of, of a refreshingness mm. from God. So yeah, that's something that I try to do uh, yeah. regularly as well. And um, what would you say kind of as we wrap up this conversation what, to someone who has never contemplated doing a Sabbath before and, and it just seems really strange or to someone who grew up with this idea that that was very legalistic and you know you can't do shopping, you can't do this, and you can't do that. Um, or just or someone wants to give it a go or used to do it but got out of the habit. How what would you how could you encourage someone to, to kind of get started? I wonder about maybe just not not thinking about it as a twenty four hour time, but but biting off a smaller piece of time. So maybe yeah. two or three hours even. And maybe thinking about it in in two parts, you know, doing something that's really intentional with God, whether that's listening to worship music, silence and solitude, reading your Bible, uh, whatever it may be. So kind of having a component of that and then having the delight component where you just think of something that you you know really refreshes you. And maybe it's sitting in your back garden and reading a great book or yeah. maybe it's playing with the kids and you know maybe it's going for a walk with a friend it it could be so many different things um but kind of thinking about that as well but then really being present in that moment you know put your phone Mm. away and or close your computer you know or turn off the notifications for your emails you know really trying to not allow yourself to get um distracted by work and by yeah, the notifications or whatever it may be, you know, and just setting across aside that time and, and really boundarying it. I think that that's really a key to the Sabbath yeah. and to the rest is that it's like, no, no, this is where I end. This is where my work ends. And, and this is where I rest. And, and I know it, it, it is hard when there's a lot going on and when you carry a lot of different responsibilities. Um, but, but sometimes it's, it is okay, to, or rather it is okay, <laughs> we're told to do it, uh, to, to just draw that line and be like, no, I'm, I'm done now. And, and now it's time for me to rest. And, and, and I think to also just think about it in terms of, um, it's okay to need this, because it will help you, it will help sustain you. Mm. And I think that's something that I've, uh, probably in a hard way, <laughs> you know, like, come to realize is that I, I do burn myself out 
if if I don't have this time. And so actually, it's not um, selfish and it's not lazy, but it's a it's ne it's necessary for me to keep going in the long run. And and I feel like that's something that Dan and I have often talked about and we've talked about as well. You know, we want longevity in in everything yeah. that we do. You know, like we we're not in for the short um, for the short race. We're in for the long haul. We're in for the marathon. And and if we want to run that race, we have got to rest along the way. And and so that is something that is is just needed. And and that's OK. Yeah. I think coming to um, to grips with that is, is part of it as well. Yeah. So good. So good. It's the upside down logic yeah. of the kingdom of God, isn't it? That actually if we take that time out um, and yeah. we're better for it and yeah. It doesn't make sense when we look at our calendars and our lives, but it does make sense to God. And he, yeah, like we said, wove it into the very fabric of our of creation and our DNA to, to rest with him. And he invites us into that. And yeah, I want to encourage anyone to, yeah, give it a go. Um, so Melissa, before we say goodbye, would you, would you pray for us, um, mm. please? Thank you. Absolutely. <clears throat> Father, we're so grateful for who you are as our kind Father, mm. that you invite us into this space and this time of rest, that you desire for that to be in the rhythm of our lives, that you want it to not just wait till holidays, but for it to be in the very fabric of our weeks as we, we go through life. And God, we are so grateful for your kindness, we're so grateful for this invitation, and I know that this is hard as well, though, to take up this invitation and it's it's hard to draw those boundaries. And, and I just really want to pray, Father, that you would um, speak to each one of us about how we can best do that, how we can carve out time and whether that's even just two or three hours to start. God, would you just speak to us about how we can even great, get creative with our time for those who are carrying lots of different responsibilities. Maybe there's uh, some out of the box ideas of, of how to do Sabbath, but God, I just trust that you will give those. Um, but ultimately, Father, just really help us to be disciplined in this, help us to take the initiative in it and help us to draw those boundary lines, God, so that we can enter into this time of rest and and spend this time with you and and be refueled. And so, Father, I just want to pray for each one of us um, in the day, in the days to come, but also the weeks to come. God, just help us to set this this rhythm into our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen. So, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Melissa. I know, kind of, we we meandered along a path, but there's some real uh, gems in there, and some just that heart of God. So, I just want to read again a verse uh, that we talked about from Exodus, it says, the Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. That our rest is found in him, not a list of helpful techniques to rest and have a bath, like we said, but to actually rest in him. And just because you might not have had time to write it down in a conversation, we framed it in John Mark Comer and uh, Bridgetown Church and Practicing the Way. They have a really helpful phrasing called stop, rest, delight and worship. So for Sabbath, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop working. I'm going to stop worrying about it. I'm going to stop wanting things. I'm going to rest. I'm going to rest my mind. I'm going to rest my body. I'm going to rest my spirit. I'm going to delight and celebrate the goodness of God and those things that bring me joy. And I'm gonna worship and center God in my heart. Because Sabbath is about the restoration of our souls. And maybe that's why Jesus, as I look through scripture, maybe that's why Jesus did so much healing on the Sabbath. Not because he was trying to be controversial and, and break the laws, but because Sabbath is about restoration and restoring our souls. And he did that by healing. And so I want to remind us that beautiful phrase that Melissa uh, said that we picked up on, just about the kindness of God and his invitation to come and rest with him, to rest in him. And I'm going to read the verses from Matthew that we've looked at before. I'm going to read it from the message. 
And this is what Jesus said. He said, are you tired? Worn out? Burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. That's what he's inviting us into. That's what Sabbath is about. A moment to stop, to rest, to delight and worship with Jesus. To find true rest for our weary souls so our souls can catch up. Imagine if we as a church put this into the rhythm of our week, that we were working and living from rest and not for it. And I want to encourage us today that we might start putting this in our diary. And as we said, it, a day might be so unrealistic right now and honestly, really hard. It's not an easy thing to do. It's almost like you're detoxing from a drug or something. It's really hard to take that time. So maybe start with three hours, start with five hours, plan it. Put those things in to help you stop rest, delight and worship. And let's see by the end of the summer, by the end of this series, as we journey through, if our souls are being brought back, if he is restoring our souls. Why don't we pray together? Father God, we're so thankful for your invitation to rest, your invitation to, to set aside some time to be with you, to recenter our hearts, our minds, our emotions on you, to be in your presence because that's where we find true rest. And Father, I pray for, for those of us longing for rest, that we would take up your invitation, that we would set aside the time so that you might restore our souls and give us a Sabbath rest that you promise us and invite us into. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your kindness and your invitation. I want to say yes all over again to stepping in to Sabbath rest. I want to say sorry where I've wandered, where I've forgotten. Say, Lord, I want to be in your presence. There's no place I'd rather be. I want to run to you and rest in you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're going to work.